Rocket Lab just moved Neutron's fairing to Launch Complex 3 after completing critical testing. The innovative design stays attached to the booster, opens to release satellites, then closes for reuse. No recovery ships needed like Falcon 9. This could mean faster turnaround and lower costs. But what's the trade-off? That fixed fairing architecture means Neutron can only launch satellites, never humans. Falcon 9 has flown 588 missions, including crew to the ISS. Is Neutron's efficiency worth permanently giving up human spaceflight? Let's dive right in. To understand why Neutron faces this permanent limitation, we need to look at where Rocket Lab came from. The company built its reputation on Electron, a workhorse designed for small satellites. Since 2017, Electron has completed over 70 successful launches with around 20 missions planned this year alone. But the space industry evolved faster than expected. What changed the game? Satellite constellations exploded in size and complexity. Companies weren't launching 100 kilogram CubeSats anymore. They needed to deploy hundreds of heavier satellites quickly and cost effectively. Electron maxed out at about 300 kilograms to orbit, which suddenly wasn't enough. Rocket Lab faced a choice. Watch competitors take the growing market or build something bigger. In March 2021, they announced Neutron, a medium-lift rocket capable of hauling 13,000 kilograms to orbit over 40 times Electron's capacity. The target was clear from day one. Neutron would compete directly with Falcon 9 and Blue Origin's upcoming new Glenn. But could a company known for small rockets really challenge SpaceX? Just days ago, Rocket Lab posted that the Hungry Hippo fairing passed qualification testing. The fairing completed 275,000 pound load testing, simulating forces during max Q when aerodynamic pressure peaks. The two halves can open and close in just 1.5 seconds, less than half the time needed for typical stage separation. The aft control surfaces passed 125% mechanical load testing. Everything's now shipping to Launch Complex 3 at Wallops Island, Virginia. Does this mean Neutron is actually ready to fly? Yesterday, the team lifted the second stage static fire test stand into place. This sets up the first firing test of Neutron's Archimedes engine. If testing goes smoothly, first flight could happen as early as the first quarter of 2026, though mid-2026 seems more realistic. About four months ago, Rocket Lab already tested Archimedes. The results showed an impressively clean blue flame, a sign of efficient combustion. Archimedes runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, the same propellants as SpaceX's Raptor. The sea level version produces 730 kilonewtons of thrust with 329 seconds specific impulse. The vacuum version pushes 890 kilonewtons with 367 seconds ISP. Those are solid numbers, but how do they stack up against Falcon 9's proven Merlin 1? D engines. Merlin 1D uses an older gas generator cycle rather than stage combustion. At sea level, it generates 845 kilonewtons with 282 seconds ISP. The vacuum variant reaches 981 kilonewtons with 348 seconds ISP. Multiply that by nine engines, and Falcon 9's first stage delivers about 7,605 kilonewtons total thrust. Archimedes beats Merlin on efficiency thanks to modern stage combustion and methane fuel, but Merlin wins on raw power per engine. Does efficiency matter more than proven reliability? Both rockets use nine engines, yet Falcon 9's booster produces about 160 tons more total thrust. The reason comes down to simple physics. Falcon 9 stands nearly 70 meters tall, while Neutron measures just 43.5 meters, almost 40% shorter. That taller vehicle needs more power to lift itself, plus maximum payload. Falcon 9 can haul 22.8 metric tons to orbit, while Neutron tops out around 15 metric tons. In pure lifting capacity, Falcon 9 clearly wins. But Rocket Lab isn't trying to beat Falcon 9 on payload alone. They're betting on price. Neutron targets $55 million per dedicated launch versus Falcon 9's typical $67 million. That's $12 million cheaper per mission, right? Not exactly. The math gets complicated when you factor in payload efficiency. At 13 tons to orbit, Neutron costs about $4,230 per kilogram. Falcon 9 carrying over 22 tons 
comes in around $2,600 to $2,940 per kilogram. So no, Neutron doesn't actually beat Falcon 9 on cost efficiency. Then what's the point? The answer lies in mission flexibility. Not every customer needs Falcon 9's full 22-ton capacity. If you're launching a 12-ton satellite constellation, paying for an extra 10 tons of unused capacity makes no sense. Neutron becomes the right-sized option, cheaper than booking excess capacity on Falcon 9. This is where Rocket Lab sees their market opening. Can they carve out enough business to justify Neutron's development? The second advantage comes from that distinctive Hungry Hippo fairing design. Unlike every other rocket, Neutron's fairing never separates from the booster. When it's time to deploy satellites, the fairing opens like a hippo's mouth, releases the payload, then closes and returns to Earth attached to the first stage. No separate fairing recovery needed. Everything comes back in one piece. Compare that to Falcon 9's process. About three minutes after liftoff, Falcon 9 jettisons its fairing halves into the ocean. SpaceX sends specialized ships to retrieve them. The company has done this hundreds of times successfully, but it adds complexity, time, and operational cost. Neutron's integrated approach is cleaner and potentially enables faster turnaround between flights. Could this design innovation give Rocket Lab a real edge? Here's where we circle back to the fundamental problem. That same fixed fairing that makes Neutron efficient has permanently locked it out of the most prestigious missions in spaceflight, human transportation. Falcon 9 hasn't just launched satellites, it's flown Crew Dragon to the ISS with astronauts on board, logging 588 total successful missions. By 2026, Falcon 9 will launch Vast Space's Haven 1, the world's first commercial space station. Neutron can never do any of that. The fixed fairing means the rocket is restricted to satellite deployment. There's no way to reconfigure it for crew capsules or large modules. In engineering terms, Neutron optimized for one mission type at the expense of versatility. Was that trade-off worth it? This explains why SpaceX doesn't view Rocket Lab as a serious threat. If the rivalry between SpaceX and Blue Origin rates a 10 out of 10, Rocket Lab versus SpaceX barely registers as a 3. They're not playing the same game. Falcon 9 operates on a completely different level. Serving missions, Neutron wasn't designed to handle and never will be. That said, tensions between the companies have flared before. Back in 2020, after Rocket Lab lost seven customer satellites in an electron failure, Elon Musk publicly supported CEO Peter Beck. Sorry to hear about this. Hope you get back to orbit soon. Rockets are hard. It was respectful during a difficult moment. But the relationship shifted in 2023. Beck criticized SpaceX for creating what he called an accidental monopoly. He argued that Falcon 9's ultra-low-cost rideshare missions were distorting the small launch market, making it nearly impossible for companies like Rocket Lab to compete fairly. The comments raised questions about anti-competitive behavior. Then came 2025. Following several Starship test flight explosions, Beck appeared to take a jab. We're not going to rush and take stupid risks to launch Neutron before it's ready. That remark instantly reignited debates about whether real rivalry exists. But here's the thing. If Neutron's first flight gets delayed or ends in an explosion, that comment would look less like confidence and more like tempting fate. The contrast in philosophy is striking. Musk applies a fail-fast, learn-fast approach to Starship. SpaceX accepts risk during test flights to gather real-world data rather than perfecting every detail before launch. Each flight tests specific systems, exposes weaknesses, and feeds improvements directly into the next version. Like moving from Starship 5-2 to V-3 to V-4 with major upgrades between versions. It's the opposite of NASA's traditional approach, which demands near perfection from the start. Musk emphasizes that rapid iteration drives success. Failing early in actual flight conditions reveals problems faster than any simulation. So here's the bottom line. Neutron brings real innovation, a clever fairing design for faster reuse, competitive pricing for medium payloads, and modern methane engines with impressive efficiency. For customers launching 10 to 15 ton constellations, Neutron offers a compelling alternative to paying for Falcon 9's unused capacity. Rocket Lab has identified a genuine market opportunity, 
But that if carries weight. Neutron still needs to prove itself in actual flight. Archimedes engines need to demonstrate Merlin 1D's reliability across hundreds of missions. The hungry hippo fairing needs to work flawlessly in space's harsh environment. And critically, Rocket Lab needs to deliver on their timeline without the delays plaguing other new programs. Even if everything goes perfectly, Neutron will always operate in Falcon 9's shadow. The fixed fairing that makes it efficient has permanently closed the door to human spaceflight. Missions that generate headlines and represent the ultimate validation of a launch system. Falcon 9 will continue launching astronauts and space stations, while Neutron handles satellites. That's not necessarily a failure. The satellite market is massive and growing. There's room for multiple players. Rocket Lab doesn't need to beat SpaceX. They just need to carve out sustainable business at the right price. Whether Beck's cautious approach succeeds against Musk's aggressive iteration remains to be seen. The first launch in 2026 will reveal whether Rocket Lab made the right trade-offs. What do you think? Will Neutron's design give it a real edge? Or did Rocket Lab sacrifice too much versatility? Drop your thoughts below. If you found this valuable, smash that like button and share it. Subscribe to Space Update 24 hours for more in-depth space coverage as we track Neutron's journey to launch.